Hey guys, it's Amanda and I'm back with another video. So today I am going to be doing a Q&A. A couple weeks ago I asked you guys to ask me questions on Instagram. So yeah, I'm going to be responding to those now. So the first question is, was it hard making friends your first year? I would definitely say it was hard to make friends the first year. I mean, not the first year, but like the first couple months of school, it was definitely hard for me to make friends. And I think I also felt that I wasn't making friends because I felt like everyone else around me like had friends and had their group and I just didn't. So I feel like that kind of just exacerbated it more. Uh, a lot of the times it's like really normal to not have like best friends. <laughs> Um, like after a week or two of school um, you know it's, that's that's the case for some people but it's like honestly not always very realistic so <sighs> it was definitely hard going through that and not having people I could really go to but I feel like as I made more friends like as I made one good friend then they could introduce me then they would might introduce me to their friend or whoever and it kind of just like kept building on that so I feel like honestly the hardest part is like making that first really good friend that you can go to and then after that I think it gets a lot easier and you kind of just accumulate friends as you go through the college experience so yeah okay someone asked what's your opinion on the evident racial divide at NYU wow so honestly I don't really think that there's a racial divide at NYU NYU is a very diverse school um, insert diversity statistics here but I would say more than anything there is a class divide NYU is extremely expensive and you really do need a lot of money to attend here or you even need to be you even need to be able to afford loans to attend here so yeah I would say more than anything there is a class divide um, even sometimes who you're friends with can like really affect that like if your friends are always eating out or like doing whatever uh, and you simply just can't afford that type of lifestyle then uh, you know it's kind of likely that you're gonna be hanging out with people who can afford to do things that are more in your price range so uh, yeah I definitely feel like there is a class divide there is more of a class divide at NYU and racially uh, I feel like I've personally made a lot of friends who are people of color just because it's like really easy to relate about that. Like if you're like the only two black people in a classroom, it's gonna be a lot more easier to bond over that. Um, so yeah, there's my answer. <laughs> what are you doing in New York City for the summer? So this summer I am in New York City. I'm so happy to be here. This summer I am being a summer assistant, which, uh, most people probably don't know what that means. It basically means being a summer RA. So yeah, I'm a summer RA um, in the same building that I lived in during the school year. No AC. It's been tough. Actually, I don't even have any of my fans on now because I want the audio to be good for this. So the things I do for YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just being a summer assistant and it's been great. Flo asked, what's your fashion inspiration? This is a really good question actually. I would say my fashion inspiration mostly comes from online, mostly like YouTube. Uh, some of my favorite fashion YouTubers to watch are, well she's not necessarily fashion, but like she does a lot of thrifting videos, which is how I get most of my clothes, but Diana Chamomile, I love her videos, also Best Dress, um, and then even I'll get a lot of fashion inspiration from just scrolling through the Explore page on Instagram or even just like literally being outside home with a cute outfit freaking guys everyone in new york city always dresses so cute i feel like every time i go in the park like i always see like an instagram girl looking really cute in her outfit and like i can just get inspiration from that so yeah would you be willing to read our college essays applying for the class of 2024 so this is a really good question um i would say email me about this i I, I would say yes, but I would do it for a fee just because, um, you know, college essay application stuff like people like that's like a legit like service that people do pay money for. And I hope I'm not like sounding like cheap when I'm saying this, but yeah, it is a service that people pay money for. So I wouldn't want to like undersell myself. 
Um, but yeah, I would definitely help you if you email me. I can like tell you my credentials. I did, you know, well, I did very well in all my AP English and I did really good on the ACT English. So uh, yeah, um, yeah, definitely email me. <sighs> okay, someone, same person also said, also skincare routine because some of us are not as gorgeous as you. So, oh my gosh. I get this compliment a lot, um, which I really appreciate, but I feel like I don't have amazing skin. Like, I, I, I like my skin. I, I don't think it's horrible or anything, but like, I feel like, I don't know. If, I feel like you're most critical on your own face, but I feel like I definitely don't have perfect skin, which it might look like that now because I'm wearing foundation, but I can even insert pictures to show you guys that my skin is not always perfect. It comes in waves. Sometimes it's better than others but even on the side of my face you might be able to see I have a lot of like dark spots from like acne scarring so I'm trying to work on that um yeah I'll probably do a skincare routine soon though I'm trying out some new skin skincare stuff right now so I'm gonna see if that works first before I kind of like recommend any stuff to you guys so yeah okay someone asked what inspires you this is a really good question because Literally before like two days or before like a day ago, I had been feeling so like uninspired for the longest time And for me inspiration like I don't have a necessary like a source where I go like oh, I'll get inspiration from here It kind of just It's like a eureka moment. I'm just like whoa. I want to create things. I want to do things and that happened to me the other day I was just sitting in the park and I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw um, I follow hello Kate or Katie Bilotti on Instagram and she put up an Instagram picture of her travel diary and I was just like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. Like it was just so beautiful that it just made me want to start creating things all of a sudden. So then I started like sketching out like a short film that I would want to make and like writing down video ideas posts on YouTube. It's just like the randomness of like small things that will totally inspire me to just like create. So I'm kind of like on a little creative streak right now and yeah, definitely gonna try to keep it going. Okay, Alyssa asked, fave book and why? Give one of your favorite quotes or sentences from it. So, uh, it's so hard when people ask me what one of my favorite things are uh, as an indecisive person. I don't have like one specific book that I would say I like over all the other ones, but one of my favorite books is this book. Wow. Okay, it's kind of washed out, but it's called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell subtitled the story of success so basically it's a book that kind of just explores the meaning of success and ex especially very exceptional successes like the Beatles, Bill Gates, things like that. Malcolm Gladwell he kind of just like reveals to you how success is very much about opportunity and timing and even luck and that you know hard work is can be such a fraction of it so I feel like I don't know I really liked it because it really put that into perspective because we kind of like live in like the culture where it's just like hustle grind like yeah <laughs> like keep on working and you'll be successful but like honestly that is really not always the case um like that quote where like you have the same 24 hours in a day as Beyonce like yes but also, did you like have the same upbringing as Beyonce? Did you have the same opportunities as her? Like, it's so it's so dependent on so many more factors than how hard you work. So I feel like that definitely like keeps me grounded and it's like really a way for me to be like, when I start to compare myself to other people's successes, I'm kind of like, dude, you have a totally different life than them. So it's like not even worth it to try to compare that. So yeah. Okay, someone asked, what do you want to do in the film industry? <sighs> so, in the film industry, um, honestly, I don't know. It's weird because like, I'm not even like a film major who's like, I have to work in the film industry to like be happy and fulfill my life's purpose, which like, I know this might be weird to some people, but yeah, <laughs> um, I think it's just because I'm a quite realistic person and I know it's a very competitive industry to break into and I know that not only hard work gets you there but a lot of opportunities and luck and connections so um, I would say in an ideal world if I was working in the film industry I would probably want to be like a writer director I think that would be cool um, pretty popular for like the more of the indie films these days 
Um, I would also like to try producing. I don't, I've never really produced anything, so I don't know exactly what that entails, but producing is something I'm also like interested in, but I think writer director would be very fun. So yeah. She also asked, what is the most difficult thing about your major? So yeah, I'm a film major and I would definitely say the most, one of the most difficult things about my major is that <laughs> grades don't really matter and as a very grades oriented person and I've like always like grown up being like I have to get an A like you know I study and like kind of just being very rigidly knowing like my place and how I'm doing through grades and I'm relying on that a lot it's like kind of weird like when your own teachers are like yeah grades don't really matter <laughs> and it's funny because it's like yeah you can get an A in the class but getting an A doesn't necessarily mean you made a great piece of art you know like you, it's like literally you can get an a by just doing just doing what's asked of you but like yeah i got an a but like did i do something great like you know what i mean not that i want to be graded super harshly but it's still just like i don't know that aspect of it i don't really like and then another aspect that is kind of hard for me is that film is a very collaborative thing and i <laughs> always like kind of went into things with the mindset of like if i want something done well i'll do it myself and for film that's really not the case like there's so many parts in moving pieces that like you really do need other people to do you need actors producers people hold the camera like all sorts of things and it's just kind of hard for me to ask other people for help and to sometimes even trust other people that they'll do it the way I want because I mean I guess I can be like a little bit of a control freak sometimes <laughs> like just a little bit like it's not like bad but like always just kind of worrying like oh it's, are they gonna do it like how I picture it so I think that's definitely a hard thing and then also even the fact of like just like getting people to like help me with something um just out of like for like no money like that kind of i'm just like wait will people like even do that like who would want to do that for me like what <laughs> and i've worked on like crews for free so like it obviously it's doable like that's the whole point of film school but like that still like so intimidates me so yeah i would say that's definitely a hard part about my major and the same person asked what films inspire me the most <laughs> okay, so the films that inspire me the most, I, Tanya, Heathers, and Get Out, those are some of my favorite movies. Get Out because I really love um, how it uh, creates this really interesting comment commentary on, you know, race relations. The, like this thriller, horror, horror uh, thing, and it's not just like a documentary, like racism is bad, but it's just, I don't know, I feel like it's it has so much fun with it which i really appreciate and i like my favorite films are things that are like oh damn like i wish i cre could create that or i want to create something like that in the future so i really like get out and then heathers i really like because um i like i really love the juxtaposition of it like all these like super dark lines and super dark themes like but just like the aesthetic of like these teen kids in the 80s wearing like matching plaid skirts and blazers i just like love that type of juxtaposition um yeah and i feel like it really it respects teenagers you know it doesn't like you know dump them down um christopher asked favorite emoji i go through emoji phases my friends know this because like i'll be really into sending like a certain emoji after every sentence but right now it's that one that's like and it's like blushing and it's like <laughs> that's my favorite emoji and also the clown one because i am a clown and then the last question is what would you say is the biggest negative about going to school in new york city so honestly coming to college for me was like all about location because i so wanted to be in new york city so it's so hard for me to think of negatives but I would say probably the biggest negative about going to school in New York City is that you're in a very hustle and bustle place and a, like a hustle culture where everyone's always working, doing something, being productive. So I think it's here it's kind of easy to compare yourself to people. Also, so many freaking beautiful people live here. <laughs> so, okay, I think one of the hardest things about living in New York City is that you can compare yourself to people a lot, whether it's by looks, money, success. Um, so, you know, I've, I've had to like deal with that a lot and it, you know, it's like really a daily thing, 
Um, I would say that's probably one of the biggest things, but other than that, I love going to school in New York City. If you have any type of video requests, leave them below. Let me know if you guys want me to do some more back to school type videos. I know like YouTubers are so annoying like doing back to school videos in like July, but it is upon us. So definitely let me know what types of videos you would love to see coming up and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!